you don't know how thankful I am at my age to be here all the my to experience this before I die. I get to experience freedom. I get to ex experience supreme black love. Mm -hmm. I get I get to feel what sisterhood feels like without resentment and envy and cattiness. You know, I get to hear sister say, what can I get for you? Yeah, Africa is, like she said, it's warm. The people are warm. They don't worry about anything. They're just content with what you have. The greed is not there. The family oriented. They are so communal. It's awesome. I, I, I would not, when I go back home, like the brother said, I'm going to get my stuff together, sell what I have to sell. I will be here. I'll be back. all doing it's Ghana month so you all need to represent Ghana that is why I've got my I love Ghana t-shirt this was done by Charlie socks so hey you all should make sure you get yourself this from Charlie socks the link will be in the description I found myself in a beautiful part of Ghana that I have never been this is Pram Pram and it's in the greater Accra region listen it's just 45 minutes out of what Accra city so yeah what am I coming to do in here I told you that moving to Africa is now a movement so many people are settling back in the continent and it's so exciting to see what is happening I just came in here to check out what's going on I think there's a party and uh, you know what wherever there is food there's water Maya food is a lot man a lot on the plate do me a favor, like the video if you love food too, and um, subscribe and be part of the awesome family. And she's the one who brought me here, by the way. Thank God, I'm a baby right there. I love it so much. Oh, uh, oh, you're so precious. This is my, come, come here, come here. Thank you. This is my little, little darling. This is Gifty. Gifty, Gifty hi. say hi How to one Good to see you. Nice. Yeah, uh -huh. she's helping you me. Lo you're looking so beautiful. Really? I can't believe that you're 73 years old. Yeah, 73 years old. Whoa. 73. 73, young and beautiful. 73 years old. 73 oh, wow. years old. Everybody come here. Everybody waiting for you. We sit Everyone there. is waiting for me. Yeah, they waiting for you. Oh, wow. Everybody waiting for you. Everybody waiting for you. Everybody is waiting for what am I? Everybody waiting for what am I? Is here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how are you? Good. Good. I know you. Yes, you do. Angie. Remember we were uh, at the flag? The, the, the oh, thing. Yes, 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 yes. You too, you too, you too. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Whoa. This is a full house. Yeah. It's yeah. a house of love. Welcome, welcome. Hi, how are you? Hi. Give you a hug and say welcome home. It's my other daughter. Your other daughter. You Deborah. have so many beautiful my daughters. Daughter. Yeah, come on up. <laughs> Come on, come you? on over. Great. Let yeah. me say hello to Yeah, this is family. he keeps the yard everything. This is Sion. Brother, how are this you doing? This is Sion. Yes, Hi. Sion. Sion's there for you. Uh -huh. And she helped me with the decorations <laughs> today. Oh, oh, oh. Come on over here. No, don't hang back. Come on. Come on. Everybody's here. Yeah. It's come a come big on. family. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Hey. How are you? Wonderful. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Come on. Come on. Here's my nephew. Here's my nephew. Hi, nephew. This is Curtis right here. How are you? This is Curtis. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Yeah. Good. So everybody's inside. Get, Everyone get, get inside. Yeah, yeah, get some air conditioning until we come out, out here and okay. start jamming. Good to see you again. Good to see you again, yeah? Great. Who's the DJ? Yes. Ah, Wogwan, are you from Jamaica? Yeah. Jamaica is in the building. It was so cool to be in the midst of Africans that were born in the diaspora that have transitioned back to the motherland, sharing their experience in Ghana with me. It was so hard to absorb that alone, so I had to put this on camera. This is gonna be a random interview, but hey, you know what you need to do for me? Like the video, it's very important. Share the video so that others will know that Africa is the home for black people, both on the continent and abroad. Thank you.
collected mat about a month ago, peaches and I and Diana were at a, at a restaurant in Accra, and he was so so nice, he was walking by, and I told him, I said, you have a chance to get away, you can run now if you don't. You belong to me now. You're a part of my. You're a part of my family. So you can you can break and run, or you can stay. So you stay. Now you, you belong to me. You're part of my family. And so you see what he did. He's a part of the family. So this is my extended family. These women here are a part of my life, and I wouldn't trade anything for them. I have the peaches. And, Deborah, they had everything, everything to me. They're everything to me. They have been there for me. For me, I knew. I don't know anything about Ghana. All I know was I was watching Mr. Ghana Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Washington D.C. Washington D.C. Washington D.C. And, and the video side. brought you here. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I but I, I've never been to prom prom, and you're already here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I and and let, let me say this, you know, she said she came to Ghana because of my video, but I came to prom prom for the first time because of her. It's that you have to understand, uh, you have to understand what I gotta do, because I will cry so my kids is, well anyway, you have to understand how important you are. And I don't think you understand because you're so humble and you're so sweet. Your spirit is sweet and you're pure and you don't have a hidden agenda, you know? And we are here because our ancestors brought us here. Yeah, exactly. Our ancestors commanded that we came. I heard the voice just as clear and the voice said, come home now. Yeah. The boy said, come home now, not come home when you get ready, come home when the money's right, come home when you get everything lined up. The boy said, come home now. So I came. But you helped me, Rodemaya, by everything that, that, that you said was so upbeat. It made me think, it's possible I could come home. And when I get here, you know, I meet these wonderful women who just love me because they wanted to, because they chose to love me and to show me that I have a home here. So I just wanted to, as I'm saluting more than mine, I want to salute all of you beautiful, beautiful. I ain't gonna cry, I ain't gonna look at you, because I'm gonna stop crying. I ain't gonna look at you. what we this is what we've achieved over here we do what our grandmothers used to after slavery time we look out for each let, let, other let me help you. Yeah. we look out for each other we take care of each other mm -hmm. uh, do you need anything from the store I'm going to the store okay that means somebody goes to the store and brings it to you of what you having for dinner? Are you not cooking anything? Well, I'll send dinner to you. Okay, that's what our grandmothers did. Your baby's sick, I'm gonna come over to your house and sit with you. Your mother died, I'm gonna come over and be with you. We used to be with each other. We used to be with each other. It's called standing in the, in the gap. You don't know how thankful I am at my age to be here all my life to experience this before I die. I get to experience freedom. I get to ex experience supreme black love. I get, I get to feel what sisterhood feels like without resentment and envy and cattiness. You know, I get to hear sister say, what can I get for you? What do you need for me to do? I just told a soul yesterday, all I need for you to do is touch and agree with you. That's all I need. Just touch, just touch me and tell me it's going to be all right. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. So thank you, my darling. Thank you, my darling. You want to so hide? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hide. I love you so 
much you don't know. And I want you to know this is your home. Anytime you come this way, just say, Mama Vera, I'm coming. And I'll put some pots and pans. I already told her. The guest room is ready. Y'all come and spend the night. Come and eat whatever you, you want to. You know, and this is, I want you to know this is your home. So welcome. Thank you. To Sankofa Shangri-La. We have food for you, entertainment, Aww. and a lot of love and hugs, and a lot of sisters with big old cushy titties. To <laughs> 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 oh, no. Thank you. Did you did y'all want to introduce yourself uh, individually to World of Mind while we're here? Mm -hmm. Did you uh, y'all want to tell you? Tell him where you're from briefly. Anybody yes. want to do that? I thought everyone in here lives in Prom Prom. No? <laughs> no, actually. Oh, no. Well, my name is LaShawn Rainey. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan, but I lived in Columbus, Ohio, but I've been here for a year and three months now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm a philanthropist and entrepreneur, so mm -hmm. that's who I am. And I'm Diana Kimball, and I've been straight here. It'll be a year, April 1st. And I've been coming back and forth to Ghana every year since 2014. I think I missed 2018 with a broken ankle. And I am here mainly because ancestors sent me here when I started finding out about who I was and studying um, African culture. I knew I needed to come, found out my family history, direct connection. My fifth generation grandmother was taken from here and uh, I'm just enjoying life. I don't have a mission. I have a student, though. I, I have school fees. <laughs> I have school fees. Oh, yeah, I got a student, Timma Raw, uh, Raw School, Timma, in Timma, Raw School. Um, I have a student there, and I, I get my school fees in, I get it paid, and, and my, my daughter, Jacqueline, is doing great in school, and and I will follow her on t until when she finished. So that's it. And then I'm just partying, having a good time, and enjoying my life. And I didn't have to buy a land. I, I was invited to come and stay with a friend. And it's just wonderful in Prom Prom Village. I am in Prom Prom, in the village, in walking distance from here. So a lot of us are in walking distance of each other. When I say it, it is walking distance. <laughs> my name is Luther. I'm from the UK. So I've moved oh, okay. here, been here about a year and a month now. Just wanted a new chapter. I wanted to start something fresh and be home. So I'm setting up a few businesses, fingers crossed. You'll see me later. <laughs> My name's Olivia. I've been in Ghana for a month and a half now. Um, I love it. I got called to come to um, the African continent after I had um, a, spir a spiritual experience um, with the SAR. He came to me and called me to um, Kemet, and then I went to Kemet and I came to Ghana. And I've just been absolutely embraced while I've been here. Right now I'm doing ghostwriting and web development for uh, quite a few organizations in African diaspora, and it's been absolutely amazing. But my uh, passion is with women holistic healing um, and spiritual healing, so that's what I do a lot of in the States. Um, well, right now I'm just traveling abroad. I'll probably be in Africa until May, June. Oh, yeah, but originally DC. Yeah, so we'll see. One way ticket for right now. Yes, me. Uptown. Hey. <laughs> Montgomery Village. Montgomery Village. Well, yeah, right there. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Diane Davis, but everyone calls me Auntie D. And really like Vera, I got the call in 1992 um, after going through some life transitions, right? I was praying one day and I said to the universe, if there's something else that I'm supposed to do in life, let me know. And I actually heard a voice say, go to Africa. And it wasn't something that I had ever planned, but I followed the voice. So I came here in 1992 on a visit. And I came every year until the year of 2012 when I had an opportunity to get a job working in Ghana. And I took it, right? And I've been here since 2012. Wow. Uh, I am Glenda Simpkins Gagne. Everyone calls me Peaches. My birthplace is Mansfield, Louisiana, but I spent 40 years of my life in New Orleans. 
I am a retired educator. I came here in 2011 with my sister Cassandra and my brother-in-law Otis. We moved to West Legon. I moved here to Pram Pram uh, the next year. So I've been in Ghana for 11 years in June. Now one thing you must have to come here is patience. Now if, if you're too bougie or too elitist, you're not, it's gonna be difficult to adjust. But it's a laid back place, a laid back people, and I'm living a very stressful, not stressful life. Stress-free stress life. And I want to tell people, come here, come to the motherland, see what's over here. And I never met anyone who came here said so they weren't going to come back. So come see us. Um, my name is Deb Carson, and I'm originally from South Carolina. My first time coming to Ghana was 2018, and I came with my mom. Um, at first, we just wanted to go to Egypt because everyone wants to see the pyramid, so let's go to Egypt. But um, the person that uh, got us to come said, why not do Ghana as well? So we did Egypt for four days and then Ghana for seven days. And I have to admit, I was disappointed when I went to Egypt. I thought, I'm in Africa. This is my first time. I should feel something. And it was kind of an empty feeling. So when I got to Ghana, when I landed, it felt like a weight was lifted off my shoulder. And I can't really explain it, but everyone I talk to that has come to Ghana, they've had that same feeling. You know that weight that you carry being um, African American <laughs> in the US um, that you don't realize until you come to a place that embraces you. And that's what Ghana, <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna cry, no! <laughs> that's what Ghana, did for me so <laughs> I've been coming back every year since and I've been here for about a year I actually live in Accra but soon to be in Pram Pram so <laughs> I'm gonna be a part of the crew the Pram Pram crew so yeah my name is Nia Yono Chitinder I am originally from Jamaica of course they named it Jamaica but I know it's something else anyway um, I'm currently living in Atlanta, Georgia. This is my second time here. I came first time with my daughter in Tamale in 2016, 17, yeah. And um, I love the place. It feels like, it seems to me like Jamaica. It reminds me of Jamaica with the food and the people, they are so loving. And I knew that I was supposed to be here because as Marcus Messiah Garvey says that Africa is for African, and if I live in the States all these years, spending all my time there doing things there, I believe I am supposed to be here, and that's my goal to be here. I am going to have a business here, and I want to, what's his name? If I want to um, present this oh, nice. to you. I'm going to have a business here soon. I am five minutes away from Miss Vera. I'm living up there in some apartments. And I am going to bring this to Ghana. I created this. It's F of my name, Neo Spice. It's, and I am I'm going to present this to you so you could share it with your family. And the spices are good. Yeah, it's, really, it's all natural. It's no, no salt in it. You put your little. For salt chicken, in. right? Yeah, for everything. For everything? For everything. I love chicken, so I think that's what you support chicken. Enjoy. And uh, I'm gonna. Kalulu, everything. It's all purpose. It's all purpose. I have one left, but I just brought five. You, you want to say something okay. to the camera? Oh, sure, sure. Low shot, but. Let us shot. Low shot. My name is Matt, uh, Matthew Knight. And. Um, I'm most recently from Los Angeles uh, and spent a lot of time in San Francisco and Oakland before then, but originally from um, Pennsylvania. And I'm really into ancient African history, so um, I, I mean, I, a couple of months ago I sold my house and I had the opportunity to live wherever I wanted, so I just decided to travel. And I've never been to the continent, so. Yeah, I thought it was the perfect opportunity to come, and the states are crazy right now anyway, so it's nice to get away. 
Um, I'm a tech entrepreneur. I, I built a uh, talent marketplace and social showcasing space for YouTube and Twitch video editors. Uh, it's called Insight, I-N-S-Y-T dot pro, P-R-O. Um, and I'm going to market right now with it here in Africa. So I, it, it, I've been working on this for the past four years and been building it for the last year and a half. And so now it's, now it's like perfect timing uh, for me to be here and to launch my business. Since you came in here, what is that one thing that you've learned that you love to carry along? What will it be? I see women walking every day carrying water. I see children going to, they ain't in the bush anymore, it's just vacant land, you know, and, and having to go to the bathroom. It doesn't bother me. This is just, these people are living. I love it, love it, love it. It's life to me. It's pure life. It's stressful in America, but here everyone is able to just freely be. Do whatever. And they're happy, you know, they're happy, like the smallest thing. I see the children, you know, running around with the yeah. little makeshift little toys, yeah. and they're happy. A tire. You know. And a stick. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just a feeling of just being happy with what they have, you see. For me, it would be that, the commitment that they have to uh, being dedicated and loyal to themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, the family unit is beautiful mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. It's something mm -hmm. that most of us are suffering from in America now because it has been lost, it has been displaced. You see, when you see the children, you know, they're, they're working in unison. They're playing together, they're laughing. They are very mannerable. The first time I caught a cab, the young brother, I'm not going to mention his name because I, I haven't had this consent, this consent to mention his name. I came out from the apartment and he greets me. I don't want to cry. He greeted me. Mom. Mommy. And I'm like, wow, I'm living in the States for, I'm 70 years old. And I'm living in the States. I've never had a young brother, young man like you all, to call me mother. And they just take your groceries. <laughs> Just you know, mommy, mommy, call him. Can you pick me up? Take me up here. Yes, mommy. They are so respectful. Um, if that is in the states, well, I don't care if it's in the state now because I'm not going to be there. But I'm just saying, if that was there, we'd have a better life. And the children are so respectful. They pass by. They say good morning. And mom, mommy, it is, it is, it is beautiful. It's awesome. It's, it's phenomenal. Um, I would take that back to them. There was not one time I went in the street, somebody done said, Mommy, the, the, the level of respect that they give you is phenomenal. It's a whole lot more, but I see them crying, so. It is phenomenal. Yeah, Africa is, like she said, it's warm. The people are warm. They don't worry about anything. They're just content with what you have. The greed is not there, the family oriented, they are so communal. It's awesome. I, I, I would not, when I go back home, like the brother said, I'm gonna get my stuff together, sell what I have to sell. I will be here, I'll be back. What I needed to understand was that I could actually have a life here. And it, it didn't require anything but to um, give up the idea that America was everything. Yes. Right. And that's the only way right. you could actually thrive. Uh -huh. There was a system bigger than me that had something in store for me. So it was the Africans, a Liberian, a, a brother from Nigeria, and the Ghanaian. They all, it was various people, but these three invested online. And they said to me, because they saw my speeches and my talks and this and that, and they said, if you was any place else in the world, you would be respected. And then the Ghanaian said, but Africa needs you. And I don't know if, because up until that point, Africa was just a bucket list. It was like, if I get to it one day, I'm going to see a giraffe up close. I never, I don't even want to lie. I, yeah, and I was, I'm serious. And I was never, I've always been Afro, ethnocentric. I've always been a natural girl. But I never was that person that was like, oh, I'm going to learn Swahili and I'm doing Kwanzaa. I was not her. Right. 
they're, they're not synonymous. So he said, okay, don't have no expectations. Find you a country somewhere in the middle and land. Uh, make yourself comfortable with common people because the reason we're attracted to you is that you're a common girl. And I did that. So Gia and I always are in the villages. We live in the villages. Yeah. We've never lived in the cities. Uh, we visit the cities, we hang in the cities, we do work in the cities, but we never, we always with the common people. So um, I kind of follow the footsteps of, of, of a Kwame Ture. You know, I like, yes. and so I've never had a place where I couldn't find a place to sleep mm -hmm. or food or anything. Africa takes good care of me. But the, but the agreement now is that I had to take all my skill sets, my talents, my gifts, everything, my network, everything, and transfer it to Africa. So I, when I go back home, the U.S. has to pay me. But what I do for Africa, I do for free. So I teach, I counsel, I, we, we do all kinds of you know, philanthropy, helping to get water, help whatever, the commu different communities have different issues. And so we keep a pulse on what is the issue of that community, and then we work there. That's one. Two, my baby. This is the last baby. My best friend, my travel buddy, mm -hmm. my nemesis, she all love it. <laughs> my other three children are not interested in Africa, and they don't have to be, okay? This one, she is. So, with her, I said, with all of my assets, the only person I can pass this to is my daughter. And so she has to be equipped to receive Africa on her own terms, because I told Gia, I said, Africa don't owe nobody an apology for being right. Africa. She would tell me, mommy, when they do like that, they're telling you that your mother, they're saying something about your mother. If they do like this, when, when, when they throw their hand like this, it means shut up. She tells me various things about community because she's in Timma Newtown. I'm in Palm, she's in Timma Newtown during the week. I let her live with the family who lives in basically a shanty, okay? which I didn't know until <laughs> I knew. And um, she never complained. She goes to the communal, communal bathroom. She goes to the communal toilet. She uh, gets her own food. What else do you do, Jibble? I go out in the community to eat. Um, I go to the store, I go to the market, and I all do it with my family at my house. But it is, it's a different thing when you live in, in a small house, but when there's love there, you can stay there forever. Yeah, because so. they took care of me. They always make sure. That sometimes, when I'm not even hungry, they ask me, "Gia, won't you eat?" And they'll put food in front of me, and they'd be like, "No, I don't want to eat." But um, even I would some days I would not even call you. And you'd be wondering like, "What is wrong? What, why isn't she calling me?" Because I'm busy with them having fun. <laughs> you know, so with the school co corporal punishment, it. I mean. You can't run away from them. They say it all the time. No matter how far you run, I'm still gonna be at the school. So when you school. return, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> so I, I mean, I just have to deal with it. What is one thing that you do in America that when you came here, it feels so different? Um, I feel like some of the school, some of the school the rules, like you can't paint your nails, you can't wear your hair certain styles. Um, in, in they fact, actually wanted you to cut your locks this year. Yeah. I know, I do. My, my final question before I go. I think I interviewed uh, Brother Jerry and he said, Africa is the future of black people. Brother Jerry from Ancestral Home. He said, Africa is the future of black people. Now that you've been in Africa, what do they say about Africa? Oh, Africa is the future of black people. Mm -hmm. Period. Period. You know, I was in the U.S. Look, in the U.S., blacks don't have the population, they don't have the resources, nor do we have the land. So if you don't have the population, the resources, and the land, you're never going to be in charge, and you will always be at the mercy of the people who do. Do you all agree with him, though? Some. Some. I agree with Garvey, all of us can't be here. Exactly. We just can't. I just wanted to know if the food is ready though. The food is ready now. <laughs> 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 the most important question. Please. Okay. <laughs>
It is good to eat, and I'll see you all. Thank you.